Hey guys and welcome back to the fourth video in the neural network tutorial series. Now in today's video what we're going to be doing is just simply using our model to actually predict information on specific images and see how you can actually use the model. I find a lot of tutorial series don't show you how to actually practically use the model. But what's the point of creating a model if you can't use it? Now quickly before I get too far into the video, I would just like to show you guys something that I'm super excited to announce because I've been waiting for them to come for a long time and it is the official Tech with Tim mugs. So you guys can see them here. I just wanted to quickly show them to you guys. If you'd like to support the channel and get an awesome looking mug, I actually really like them, then uh, you guys can purchase them just by, I believe underneath the video it shows like the Teespring link. Um, but yeah, they're awesome. They look really good and the reason I've been holding out on showing them to you guys is because I wanted to wait till I received mine uh, To make sure that it was up to quality and that it looked good enough uh, to sell to you guys essentially So if you'd like to support the channel um, You can get one of those if not that's fine But if you do decide to buy one, please send me like a DM on Twitter Instagram or something and let me know so I can say thank you to you guys So anyways, let's get into the video um, so what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna uh, we need to continually train the model every time we run the program which I know seems like a pain but unless we want to save the model which I guess I could actually show in this video later as well uh, we just have to train it and then we can use it directly after so after we've you know tested this we don't even need to do this evaluate anymore we are train the model we can use it to use it we actually just need to use a method called predict but I'm gonna talk about kind of how this works because it is a little finicky or not even just finicky, but just not intuitive. So essentially, when you want to make a prediction using the model, I'm going to set up a, uh, just a variable prediction here. You simply use model.predict, and then you pass it a list. Now, what you would think you would do is just pass it like the input, right? So in this case, we just pass it some input that's in the form 2828, and it would predict. But that's not actually how it works. When you want to make a prediction, what you need to do is put whatever your input shape is inside of a list or actually well you can do it inside of a list but you can also do it inside an, uh, an mp array as well like a numpy array and the reason you need to do that is because what predict does is it gives you a group of predictions so it's expecting you to pass in a bunch of different things and it predicts all of them using the model so for example if i want to do the predictions on all of my test images to see what they are i can do prediction equals model.predict test images and if I print out like prediction, uh, you guys will see what this looks like. So let's run this here uh, and see what we get. So obviously we have to train the model each time, which is a little bit annoying, but we can save it later on. And obviously this one runs pretty quickly, so it's not a huge deal. All right, so there we go. So now you can see this is actually what our predictions look like. Now, this is a really weird kind of like looking prediction thing. Eh? We're getting... A bunch of different lists now that's because right our output layer is 10 neurons so we're actually getting an output of 10 different values and these different values are representing how much the model thinks that each picture is a certain class right so you can see we're getting like 2.6 to the e to the negative 0 6 which means that obviously a very small number so it doesn't think whatsoever that it's that and then I'm trying to find if we can see ones that aren't like to the e uh, but apparently it's we didn't really get lucky enough with it showing because it just cut some of them off here. But if I print out, let's say like prediction uh, zero, and I guess we're going to have to run this again. I probably should have thought of that. <laughs> then you guys will see exactly what the prediction list looks like. And I'm going to show you how we can actually interpret this to determine what class it is, because this means nothing does. We want to know, is it a sandal? Is it a shoe? Is it a shirt? Like, what is it? Right. So there you go. So this is what the list looks like. So if we look through the list here, we can see these are all the different probabilities that our, uh, our network is predicting. So what we're actually going to do essentially is we're going to take whatever the highest number is there and we're going to say that is the predicted value. So to do that, what we do is we say np.argmax, okay, and we just put it around this list. Now, what this does is it just gets the largest value and finds like the index of that. So in this case, since we have 10 neurons, the first one is representing obviously t-shirt. The last one is representing ankle boot. It'll find whatever neuron is the largest value and give us the index of that neuron. So if it's like the third neuron, then it's going to give us a pullover, right? And, and that's how that works. So if we want to see the actual like name though, rather than just the index, then what we need to do is just take this value and pass it into class names. So we'll say class underscore names 
and then we'll index whatever the value is that this np.argmax prediction zero gives us, right? So let's run this and see what we get now. All right, so there we go. So we can see that now we're actually getting ankle boot as our prediction, which makes a lot more sense for us, right? Rather than just giving us like that prediction array or whatever it was. Okay, so that's great. But the thing is, how do we, how can we validate this is actually working? Well, what we need to do now, or not what we need to do, but what we should do now is show the input and then show what the predicted value is. And that way we as the humans, which know obviously which is which, can validate that. So what I'm going to do actually is just set up a very basic for loop. And what this for loop is going to do is loop through a few different images in our test images and show them on the screen and then also show the prediction. Uh, so show what they actually are and then show the prediction as well. So to do this, I'm just going to say for, I guess in this case, I in range five. And what we'll do is I'm going to say plt dot grid. I'm just going to set up a very basic like plot to show the image. I'm going to image show our test underscore images i right and i'm going to do this cmap thing so i'm going to say cmap equals in this case plt.cm dot binary which is just going to give us like the grayscale and then i'm going to say plt dot x label which just means underneath and i'm going to say is equal to actual and in this case i'm going to say plus and what do we want to do we need to get the actual label of our test image which would be in test underscore labels i and then what I'm going to do is add a header and say this is what the model predicted. So to do this, I'm going to say plt dot, I believe it's, oh, sorry, not header, so dot title. And the title will simply be uh, prediction plus, in this case, we're going to say prediction <laughs> and then I. Now, the reason we can do this, or sorry, we're going to have to literally copy this, this whole argmax thing, and we'll put that here except instead of zero, we're going to put I and just that way it will show uh, all of the different images, right? So now what I'm going to do is for each loop here, I'm going to plt dot show, which means I'm going to show those images so we can see exactly what they look like. So quick recap in case I kind of skimmed over some stuff. All we're doing is setting up a way to see the image as well as what it actually is versus what the model predicted. So we as the humans can kind of validate this is actually working and we see, okay, this is what the image and the input is and this is what the output was from the model. So let's run this and wait for it to train. I'll fast forward through this and then we will show all the images. Okay, so quick fix here. Um, I just ran this and I got an error. We need to do class names and then test labels I. And that's obviously because the test labels are gonna have like the index of all of these. So I can't just put like the number value. I have to put the class names so that we get the correct thing. Anyways, I hope that makes sense to you guys. <laughs> let's run this now. You can see that was the error I ran into. Again, fast forward and then I will be back. All right, so I am back. Now this is a little bit butchered in how I'm actually showing it, but you can see that it's saying the prediction for this was the ankle boot and it actually is an ankle boot. Now, if I close this, it'll just show uh, four more because that's the way I've set it up. So now you can see that prediction pullover, it actually was a pullover. All right, uh, we see we get prediction trouser, it actually was a trouser and prediction trouser, actual trouser. Uh, prediction shirt, actual shirt. And obviously, if you wanted to see more, you could keep looping through all of these and doing that. Now, say you just want to predict on one image. Well, what you could do, for example, is, uh, and this is kind of a weird way what I'm about to do, but you'll see, let's say we wanted to just predict like what the seventh image was. Well, then what I would do is just say test images seven, which is going to give us that 28 by 28 array. And then I would just put it inside of a list so that that way uh, it gets, it's given the way that it's supposed to look. But that also means that our prediction list, right, we're going to get uh, is equal to this. It's going to look like prediction and then it's going to have this. And then inside, it's going to have all those different values. So it's going to have like 0 0.001, 0 0.9, but it's going to be a list inside of a list. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're working with these predictions, because that is really the only way to do it. And that this is exactly what TensorFlow recommends on their website as well. If you're just predicting for one item, just put it inside of a list so that it's going to work fine. So anyways, that has kind of been it on using the model to predict stuff. In future videos, we'll get into a little bit more advanced stuff. This was a very easy classification problem, just really meant to give you an introduction. And personally, I think if you've never worked with any machine learning stuff, this is pretty cool that in a few minutes of just kind of writing a little bit of code, whether you understand it or not, you can create a simple model that can classify fashion items like a shirt, a t-shirt, 
and I don't know that's pretty cool to me and in future videos obviously we're gonna be doing a lot cooler stuff it's gonna be a little bit more advanced but hopefully you guys can stick with it I'd love to know what you guys are think of this series so far so please leave a comment down below uh, it helps me to kind of tweak my lessons and all that as we go forward if you guys enjoyed the video please leave a like and subscribe and i will see you again in